In this video, we will see the architecture of SAP used. So, let us see the agenda. So, we will be covering the two architecture that is R2 architecture and R3 architecture. So, in 1980, we already saw that they, SAP released R2 architecture that is R stand for real time and 2 stand for 2 tire. So, 2 tire means there were 2 layers that is one is the server layer and the second one was the client layer. And so, in the server layer there was one system which was highly configured and that system was called as a server. So, server handled the uh, calculation of the data and the storing of the data. So, both was handled at this particular level. Then there was the client layer. So, in the client layer there were multiple systems. So, all the systems connected with the server and there was this response and request coming out from the server and the client communication. So, because of this there was some disadvantages that is if the clients were more that is the system at the client layer were more there was more load on the server and due to which the efficiency was very low and the output was very low. Moreover, to overcome this particular problem, what they did, they introduced a new architecture that is R3 architecture. So, let us see what is R3 architecture here. So, in R3 architecture, they have this database layer, then application layer and the presentation layer. So, in the database layer, there it, it, it is a server which is responsible only for storing of the data and the application layer, it is basically used for to execution of the application. That is, it is it takes the data from the server layer and executes it from execute it on the application layer and the output is shown in the presentation layer so presentation layer it is a server which is responsible just to present the output and take the input so this was regarding the architecture of sap and basic overview of sap so in the next video we will see the architecture and more about abap